The 13th Petersburg Climate Change Summit began this Monday at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Berlin, during which the ministers and delegations from several countries recall on the agency to implement the previous resolution made during the previous meeting in order to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. The Petersburg Climate Dialogue will pave the way for a successful global climate conference in Egypt in November. According to the previous resolution, the fight against climate change requires the preservation of the Congo's basin forests, which alone absorb over 1.2 billion tons of carbon globally per year. We live in the forest and we live from the forest itself. If nothing is done to give us alternative to access to health care, then we will take our stems, leaves and roots to heal ourselves. If nothing is done about the alternatives to education, we will be forced to continually cut down the large amounts of woods to make frames, benches and everything to finance our lives. According to some NGOs, adaptation to climate change has a cost, hence the need to mobilize climate finance. Climate finance should be at, uh, you know, addressing uh, adaptation and mitigation 50-50. But when you look at 46 billion, out of 632 billion, you know that this is not half, and this is very, very unfair. The African countries have also called for the revaluation of carbon credit and debt reduction to enable them to better fight against the effects of climate change. The 12th Petersburg Climate Change Conference began Monday in Berlin with German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock highlighting the importance of staying focused on climate issues. Baerbock was joined by Egyptian Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri, who echoed her words. It is incumbent upon us in these uncertain times to act swiftly to ensure that climate action remains at the top of the international agenda and that current state of affairs is not taken as a pretext to backtrack or renege on previous commitments, especially those related to supporting developing countries. Egypt is set to host the United Nations Climate Conference in Sham el-Sheikh, Egypt in 2022, after it was rescheduled due to coronavirus pandemic. Organizers have built the two-day gathering as an opportunity to rebuild trust. Our African continent is at the heart of these climate challenges and is affected by them more than other regions. Given the specificity of this situation, its limited ability to deal with the crisis and the weak amount of funding available to it to overcome these difficulties, these recent food and energy crises have exacerbated the challenges that African countries have to face. In addition to the real threat that climate change poses to the countries of the continent that suffer from desertification, water scarcity, sea level rise, floods and torrential rainfalls. His comments come after global issues, including the conflict in Ukraine and recovery from COVID-19, has drawn attention away from climate issues. Africa is at the heart of climate challenges, and the continent is seen as a solution to this danger, given its dense forest concentration. Ghana on Sunday confirmed an outbreak of the Marburg virus disease, a hemorrhagic fever almost as deadly as Ebola, after blood samples taken from two suspected cases tested positive. It is the first time the disease is being reported in the West African country. Last week, samples from two people in the southern Ashanti region suggested the Marburg virus and had been sent to the Pasteur Institute in Senegal for confirmation, the Ghana Health Service said in a statement. Dozens of people identified as contact cases are currently under quarantine, the service added, noting that no new cases have been detected so far. The Babak virus is transmitted to humans by fruit bats and is spread in humans through direct contact with the body fluids of infected people or with surfaces and materials, according to the World Health Organization. Previous outbreaks have occurred in Angola, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Guinea. The search for oil continues for most European nations given the unpredictable future of Russian supplies to the West. On Monday, the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi visited Algeria to sign several agreements, including an energy deal to boost gas supplies and reduce his country's reliance on Russian gas. Italy buys the majority of its natural gas from abroad, with some 45% of its imports historically coming from Russia. But Rome has increasingly looked to Algeria 
Historically, its second biggest supplier to reduce their dependence after war in Ukraine sparked sanctions against Moscow and sent energy prices soaring. Algeria has therefore supplanted Russia to become, in recent months, the biggest supplier of gas to Italy, according to the Prime Minister. The two countries are also expected to sign a court to bolster judicial, industrial and cultural cooperation, according to Draghi's office. According to previous deal, Algeria was set to furnish Italy with a total of around 20 billion cubic meters of gas in 2022 as a whole before the latest agreement. As the 9th August general election nears in Kenya, the outgoing Deputy President William Ruto said he is confident in winning the votes and believes that the East African nation is a democratic country and that the elections will not be tampered with. Uh, I know there are notions that, uh, oh, you see, if you put the current president and the current leader of the opposition on one side, it becomes unassailable. I tell you, nothing could be further from the truth. The people of Kenya can cut through uh, that kind of network and still make an informed decision. And I am very confident that uh, I will win this election. In the last presidential election in 2017, an appeal by Odinga, who believes his victory had been stolen amid a high tension, led to the election being annulled by the Supreme Court, a first in Africa, and then rescheduled. Ruto believes this will not happen again. Challenges always come when uh, people start to run, run narratives, or oh, the election was stolen, I don't know, blah, 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 this, this, this. And uh, unfortunately for my competitor this time round, he has nobody to blame because the so-called system and the deep state and everything are on his side. So I think we'll have a peaceful election. <laughs> Kenyan elections have been marked on several locations by violence, particularly ethnic violence in the 2007-2008, where more than 1,100 people died and hundreds of thousands displaced. There are people from different ethnicities on either side. So we have largely managed to pull away from the usual competition around ethnicities and those kind of things to a space where we're discussing issues that apply to all Kenyans. Cost of living, the economy, creating jobs, you know. The 2022 presidential election has drawn over five candidates competing for the country's top seat to replace the outgoing president Uhuru Kenyatta. <laughs>